Uh, I, I'm involved in two, two enterprises, uh, Avalonix and Graphene Batteries. So I'll show how those two companies interact together. Graphene has had uh, made uh, tremendous headlines uh, since it was uh, verified about 10 years ago. For example, the first one I'll translate. It's the most fantastic material mankind ever have had access to. Um, and then a long list of uh, similar claims or uh, statements. And for today, the last one on the list is quite important because it has to do with what we are doing. It's also from Technisk Ukebla. So they say, Imperfect graphene can give electric vehicles that are charged in seconds. So what is this fantastic material? Graphene is a monolayer of carbon, same structure as graphite. So as you know, carbon exists in basically two different allotropes, diamond and graphite. So this is graphite structure but it's a single layer. So it's 0.3 nanometer thick. So the atoms here are much smaller than, uh, than uh, zirconium, for example. <coughs> it was predicted already a long time ago, but it was predicted that it wouldn't, wouldn't be stable. But as the Nobel um, laureates 10 years ago showed, it was stable and could be man manipulated. So, it, the theory is that it's the wavy structure seen as in this image that stabilizes it. Actually, it's very stable. It don't, doesn't burn like carbon would up to a thousand degrees. It's uh, mechanically stable. This is just an example of our material, how we made this scaffold from um, what we call reduced graphene oxide which is one of the different um, forms of graphene or, or uh, derivatives of graphene. <laughs> Why should we use graphene in batteries? Well, it's basically two properties with graphene that are interesting for batteries. It's, oops, it's the very high electronic conductivity, which can improve conductivity in the cathodes and anodes, and the low surface reactivity. Chargeable batteries are complicated things. It's a wonder they work as well as they do, because you s have a mixture of different materials and electrolyte, and this is subjected to charge to and from, and transport of ions and electrons to and from. So, so that you can cycle it in a thousand cycles or so is quite amazing. One of the reasons why batteries degrade is that there is a chemical reaction on the surface of the materi solid materials between the electrolyte and the material. So uh, little by little, the battery degrades. So this is the other advantage of, of um, graphene, that it will not really react with the electrolyte. Graphene is not a battery material as such. It doesn't char it does cannot, um, it cannot um, be charged with lithium. It's more used to be used as a conductor, like a metal would. So this is a report, not from us, but from a, uh, a sort of institution called Graphene Info, which sort of reviews all information about graphene on the internet. And they predict graphene, it will take time. It's not done right away. But they predict that graphene will lead to a doubling, or a little more, of the capacity of batteries. 
which is really what electrical vehicles and mobile phones, especially electrical vehicles, need. Because then you could run a Nissan Leaf for 34, uh, 300, 400 kilometers instead of uh, 150, 20, 200, with the same mouse or battery and the same price, perhaps, hopefully. So this will take some time. Self, for example, sulfur in the cathode, it's tremendously challenging, but it will, once these, all these challenges are solved, it will lead to much better cathodes than we have today. But there are 20 different allotropes of sulfur, and only one or two of them are really um, what we are after, so, so to stabilize those and manipulate those, it's, it's not easy. So how do we work together, Avalonix and graphene batteries? Avalonix has uh, already established production of um, what I would say pre-commercial production of uh, graphene oxide in Tofte in Norway. Uh, and uh, graphene oxide can be reduced to reduced graphene oxide, which is a sort of imperfect graphene. And as this uh, statement uh, on the first slide said, we are after imperfect uh, graphene for batteries. But imperfect can be many things. So what we are really after is the perfect imperfect uh, graphene. <coughs> And graphene batteries utilize our graphene, also samples from other producers of graphene, to, 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 to in their cathodes and anodes, and then test these as coin cells batteries in our lab. So how do we make this imperfect ba uh, graphene? Our graphene oxide here seen on a TEM uh, uh, micrograph, we can see that regions have been oxidized and regions are still perfect gra graphene. So by removing the oxidized by a reaction, sort of a reaction, we can end up with a graphene sheet with holes. And that's advantageous because a sheet like that would block the transport of lithium in the, cat in the uh, cathode or anode. But if we have holes, lithium can travel through those holes and we can still have electrical conduction. Ele electrons can still travel very fast in the rest of the sheet. So it's much about finding the perfect size of the holes, a sort of trade off out trade-off between the two effects. So, um, these are just, this is a, sort of an example of uh, what we did on silicon. Silicon is a promising anode material, but it's too good. So it takes, uh, soaks up too much lithium, which leads to silicon uh, breaking down after a few cycles. So there are many pro approaches here. Our approach is to maybe pack it within graphene, pack it within in single graphene sheets, or or deposit together with uh, um, if you have to to deposit nanoparticles of silicon on top of the graphene sheets. So. Uh, our activity, all the things we do here is development of battery grade re reduced graphene oxide, then um, en graphene enhanced cathode, graphene enhanced silicon anode. We also have worked with sulfur. And we make this pill pillared supercapacitors, which can also be used for, for uh, pill pillared RGO, which can also be used for supercapacitors which is an alternative to, to, to batteries for, for really high power. These are just examples. I think I will jump those because there's not that much time. So 
In this project, our approach has been to, to, to deposit ether nanosilica on graphene. And we see improvement. These are the, how the capacity of silicon compared to the industry, the graphite anode that the industry uses. So it's 10 times better, but it degrades within 10 to 20 cycles. So it's all about stabilizing silicon. And we see this effect, but it's, we are not there yet. It's, uh, it's very challenging. But we see definitely an effect of uh, graphene. So the, what about the battery market? It's, it's um, predicted to grow tremendously, especially perhaps due to the need to, to, to store renewable energy and to run electrical vehicles. So for Norway, what's in it? Here is another headline. <coughs> uh, pro, pro, uh, about the environmental benefits of using uh, electrical vehicles. Norwegian ferry boat run on batteries. Actually, this is not so new. In Bergen, they had one an electric ferry 100 years ago called B BEF or Beffen. But uh, in the 1930s, they changed the lead acid batteries for a diesel motor. So I want to say something about the market for batteries because it can become very, very large. So let's take Germany as an example. The yearly electricity consumption in Germany is, was in 2013 <coughs> 575 terawatt hours, approximately 7,000 kilowatt hours per German person per year, which makes sense. Little less than in Norway. So, assume you would need to store enough energy for one 25-hour cycle consumption. We know that wind and sun is off and on. So maybe we would need to store more, but say 24 hours. Then we would need a battery capacity of 1.5 terawatt hours. Assume battery capacity of 0.1 kilowatt hour per kilo, that would make 15,000 million kilos of batteries, a lot. Cost of ba producing batteries now would be perhaps 300 kroner per kilo, so altogether, and a lifetime of <coughs> perhaps around 10 years on average. So the yearly cost, yearly cost of building up this capacity would be 450 billion kroner, approximately the same as the value of the Norwegian oil production, which is also this amount of oil that Germany consumes. So all this together, it's, it shows that batteries can be as big as oil or bigger in the near future. Okay, so graphene has a potential in batteries. And, and graphene batteries and abalonics, we, we are uh, trying to get the share of this, the reward. So thank you. Thank you, Runa. Uh, we will have some uh, quick uh, questions before the break. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I understand if the graphene battery is, is a s totally different battery from the current batteries or if graphene is something you add on or you change to, for example, a lithium battery today. Yeah, I mean, in our case, we work with lithium ion batteries, so it would be just be another additive to the battery. So as a Tesla owner, when can I expect an, upgra <laughs> an upgrade to my battery based on graphene? Um, there are rumors that Tesla are looking into it, but I, I, I don't have access to that. So, so you don't have any orders from them? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is kind of a storing material? Yeah. For lithium? Yeah. Um, uh, and well, and no, not really. It's more like uh, it, it uh, helps to transport 
uh, current more efficiently so that you can make cathodes and anodes thicker, for example, or stabilize sulfur and silicon so that you can have less of all the other stash in the battery and more cathode and anode material. So is the greatest of answers that it actually lives uh, twice the length or is it that it charges fast? Uh, pr probably all of those, yeah. B but uh, w yeah, it, it will take some time. Uh, but, uh, but it's promising for life length, cycle life and total capacity. So, so uh, yeah. So th there will be a lot of small improvement probably during the coming 10, 15, 20 years. It will take uh, some time to, to end up uh, come to this very pro uh, very um, uh, good numbers that we saw here. There's a, a last question. Uh, I guess there is a kind of a race towards kind of uh, tapping into the growing electrical car industry. Uh, what is kind of your main kind of competitor when it comes to kind of new technology in the battery industry? Who are you kind of facing and what's kind of the race and the time frame uh, of this? I mean, there will be thousands of uh, university labs, companies working on similar things. So we try to, 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 to perhaps solve one little technical part that can be put together with parts that other universities or companies or whoever uh, so when these things are put together maybe the goal can be achieved but to make a new battery it takes you would need a lab with 1000 guys for 10 years mm -hmm. and you have no guarantee of making a better battery <laughs> thank you so much uh, Rune Venbo